Hi, I'm Bob Hughes with JD Squared, standing next to the, the HP 100 CNC horizontal press. What I'm going to talk about in this particular video here is tooling configurations. We're not actually going to install any tooling because it's specific to what you're installing, but we're going to talk about the general features of the machine itself and how easy it is to manufacture or make tooling for it. What we've got, the machine comes with two 2 inch um, 100,000 psi alloy uh, 100,000 psi alloy pins and a single 3 inch pin also of the same material. Um, we have to have holes up here in the machine for the different pin configurations. You can purchase more pins if you need them, but in our experience this is really all you're going to need. We do have two 3 inch holes right here to mount double pins. There's really not a lot of situations where you're going to mount double pins. There's a couple that I know of and you'll see that tooling here very shortly coming out. But the main reason that the extra pin hole here is so that we can relocate this pin further back and extend, uh, basically allow us to put larger tooling in the machine. The RAM itself, 18.8 .8 tons of pressure, has a 10 inch stroke. So what we want to do is there's times where we just may not have enough room, so we did that. But the other, the other idea of this hole in relation to pins is we manufacture a V-pin. And what the V-pin is, is if you've got the female V-die here and she's extended out and she's going to bend, you may want to bend back around yourself. We also um, can water jet custom parts for you here in-house. We have a water jet machine. And things that you may want to actually wrap around the, um, the pin. So to do that, what we did with the second hole, we have a dummy pin. And the dummy pin drops in, but it doesn't extend above the surface. And then there's a clamping mechanism that we can easily reach through and adjust right here that once we put the V-pin in, we can square the V-pin up, center it, I mean, into the, v, the female V-die, and by locking that clamp mechanism in, we prevent the, the V from rotating, yet we still have full access all the way around the entire peripheral of the pin. And we, and we thought that was a pretty nice feature. If you look at some other machines, you'll see welded brackets and all. Well, I'm not sure how you bend U-straps and rings around it with those things there of smaller diameter, but we, we, we wanted this machine to be a little bit different. That's the pin configuration. Now, for instance, these three pins here in this particular configuration has a straight line. You can put a level right across that thing. And that would be, for instance, like in our system of um, straightening. We have a straightening tool that will bolt on, and it's going to reference off these three straight pins right here. We also have some other holes for auxiliary tooling. They're 12 millimeter holes, and essentially they're to bolt things down. They're not designed to carry any load because obviously the press will just shear the bolts off. What they're designed, they're more of an alignment aid. You're going to want to use the precision holes here with dowels and all that we can supply that will do it. Let's talk now about the pressure, the ram block. I mean, this is very important. A tremendous amount of thought went into this little teeny piece of steel right here. And what we did, as we did with all the other components on the machine, is we looked at every machine in the world that we could find. And we did our two column list, the goods and the bad, you know? And what we came up with was a RAM, a RAM block that was pretty much a mixture of a lot of them. Uh, for instance, one of the key features, this is the machine RAM block right here, is we have four T-slots on each side. Um, since the machine is designed metric, but is also sold you know, in, the, in America, obviously, um, the T-slots are actually designed to either work with 12 millimeter metric T-slot nuts or half inch um, imperial you know, T-slot nuts. So any tooling that needs to be bolted on with a T-slot nut um, can be done. In the middle of the RAM block is a dowel pin hole right here, or pilot hole, and it's been sheened to one and a quarter inches. Um, yeah, that's not metric, um, and the reason for that is I just can't get metric bar stock in this country. I don't know what their problem is, but I can't get it. So since I'm manufacturing tooling here, that is an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter part. If you're overseas and you're going to make custom tooling, you'll have to take a little bit larger block and turn it down on there. A little, I'm sorry, rod, turn it down. Other features we have, um, a lot of machines you see out there, you can bolt stuff onto the face of it, but you can't bolt anything through it, you know? And we thought, well, supposing you wanted very small tooling and you were going to bolt a plate on it, but you didn't want the bulky bolts or the nuts up front. Well, what we've done on this block is there's six 14 millimeter holes running through it. Now here they're actually countersunk to where you can actually get into them and countersink the deal. But the idea is you can use these, they're reamed, so they're precision holes. You can bolt tooling onto here and either use the pilot hole or that and then actually physically bolt it to the machine, you know? And, and what it did, that just 
tremendously simplified us making tooling, which as a consequence drives the cost down. In fact, in our, our safety kill plates right here, I hope you can see the video, there's three notches right here, and what they are is they're to provide a little more clearance for these bolt heads in the event going back. You have plenty of clearance, but we thought a little bit more can't hurt. <clears throat> the ram block is also outfitted with a, from the factory, this comes with a machine, it does have a material stop built in it. Um, right now in R&D is the index table, you know, the high speed indexer and a lower cost manual indexer. The manual indexer will be out very shortly and essentially what it's going to allow you to do is manually locate the, the indexer but you'll be able to see the readout within a thousandth of an inch of where the indexer is. And that indexer is going to be under $2,000 US whereas the motorized one's probably going to be just a little under $6,000 US. So if somebody wanted some fairly high accuracy bins, but they didn't really want to shell out for the automatic, they, they can't get the other one for less than a third of the cost. Um, in the wear block, let me just set this down here, on the bottom of the wear block, we have these holes down here, and what rides in these holes is the leveler pads. It's a special alloy we use, never needs lubricating, and what happens is with the leveler bolts up here, you can basically level the head out and that prevents you from getting a cocking motion. The head is about a millimeter and a half, 50 thou or so above the table. So there, there would be, if we didn't do that, you would be able to cock it. Now, another major feature of the machine is the vertical slot. And the vertical slot, um, especially when you mate it to the corresponding um, tooling block that goes here, which has a half inch vertical slot also, accepts a standard American V tooling or press brake tooling. There's two kinds of press brake tooling. There's a few more, but the two main ones in the world are European Precision, and then you've got American Standard and American Precision. American Standard is very affordable, very common throughout the entire world. Just because it has the word American, it doesn't mean it's specific to America. That just happens to be the, the, what they call it. It's very inexpensive, and that's what we've chosen on this horizontal press. There's no reason to have high precision tooling, I mean, tooling in a press like this. So you can buy your Vs, your whatever tooling you can put in a press brake, will fit right in here, lock it down. The machine is rated for six inches height. That's the, the height of the tooling. The important thing to remember on any tooling application is you want to keep the load as near center of the ram as you possibly can. And as a consequence, if somebody ever calls us on the phone and says, hey, I bent the ram, then I'll say, hey, I'll sell you a new cylinder because ram bend is not covered under warranty. That is an absolute user error. There's no way to bend that ram unless the user himself bends something drastically off-center. We've tested the machine off-center and we have been a ram. And we're not going to tell you how far or what the limits of that is because we don't want you ever doing it. Always try to bend near the center of the ram and the machine will last for decades. You know, um, I believe that is it for the tooling. The, the wear plate is marked off in centimeters and inches. That is strictly a visual reference. Um, it is not designed for any kind of real precision. It's just that, hey, I know that I need to go, you know, 10 centimeters or four and a quarter inches, something like that. It just helps out with setup a little bit. Um, but that's really all it does. Um, and, and that's it for the tooling uh, or the, the, the setup for the mount tooling in the HP 100. Thank you for watching.